communicate with humans. I can write, I can teach, I can do anything. Out of those eight hours, who do I want to spend that with? People that really don't give a shit about me? Or, Not really. you know, you don't. And you get to a certain age where you just, you. I agree, you want the people with you that, that want to be with you. And I think in, in my life, I've been a performer and I've been a dance teacher and I've been all these things that can sometimes seem exciting. They're not. They're just normal jobs like everything else. But some people can like see that lifestyle and see, oh, that's exciting. I want to be close to the ballroom dancing stripper girl. That's fun. But at the end of the day, I'm like here taking care of my elderly mom and like making food and do like. Yeah. yeah. And I like I'm not just always like the person that's out there, like the personality, well, uh, the stage yeah. presence. You, you, I mean, we all have a stage presence. I mean, I'm, except okay, I'm pretty much the same the same guy whether I'm on the stage or off the stage because I I have like I just, I give zero fucks. I mean, I really just like it's just one of those. This is me. If you like it, great. If you don't, well, I, I, that's me, right? I always say stripper Jennifer has glitter and a spray tan, but still like a surly attitude. Most, but, most, yeah. I, 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 I uh, when I was in college, I, two of my classmates were strippers. It's really interesting. It, it is the weirdest dichotomy of, of, of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde or Miss Hyde I've ever seen. In one case, because I think she just, I've seen people really get into that lifestyle, and if they really get into it, they they have this like really sweet core personality. It's like really endearing, and then they also have like this monster inside them. That's right, right. right. <laughs> I think it's the nature of the. I think it's the nature of the business they're in. Because you, you're putting generally a very intimate part of your stuff out there for for the purposes of business. Yeah. And and I think I never thought of it as business because I never worked in a club. Um, yeah. I respect people that worked in clubs. That's awesome. I don't think I could do it just because again I'm only awake until six p.m. at night, and that's not necessarily when clubs are open. Uh, so I always did burlesque, but I did it in like theaters or I did dance in bars and places like that. But I I never was that. I, there was it always came from a theatrical background for me, so I never thought of it as. Um, you were more telling a story. Like, I like, was. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you were I more really telling. Was. Story. Yeah, you were more telling a story, and I mean, burlesque dancers tend to. I mean, yes, they, they, they. There is something. There is something about what they give that that adds to the imagination, adds a little excitement to it. But in essence, if you look at what a burlesque dancer does, they they tend to tell a story with what they, with the whatever tools they have to to do it. Um, a stripper, like an like a like like a, like a stripper. They can do that. I mean, they are fulfilling a fantasy, mm -hmm. but I think the re I think the end goal is a little different. All right, I, is there's a, there's a little bit more there's a little bit more um, there's a little less storytelling, more money shot. Maybe I'm I wrong on say, that. See, I again, I've never done it personally, but I have lots of friends that did. But I think the only difference to me and I could definitely be wrong, is working in a club versus being a burlesque performer on stage, having it be art or having it be in a club. I think the being in a club makes it a business and you're mm -hmm. there to make money. Yeah. So to me, working in a club is the same way as writing a book that you know is commercial. And you're still writing it and it's still art, but you're writing that one because you know it's gonna sell. When you're in a club, you're doing what you know is gonna sell yeah. Not what you think is going to make the people go, oh, that one really touched my heart. Yeah. Like that one moved my soul. Okay, that's fair. I, I, they're they're going to say, oh, that one really made me move my wallet and shuck all these ones at you because it's a job. Yes. Um, yeah. It's or, a sexually empowering job at times, but it is a job. So you're there yeah. to make money. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it, it, there's, there's definitely a business aspect to it. And it's not a terror. Again, I'm not. It, it, look, there's lots of people, but I think there's also just the fact that you're, I can't speak from the burlesque point of view, but I mean, I'm just in the bars, there's a lot of drugs, there's a lot of other yeah. substances involved there. And that makes, that can make things very murky. At least one of my friends there, um, I remember her, there was, again, she was super nice, but there was that side of her been like, ooh, right? But that's that, again, you get messed around, you have to protect yourself. And, and, and as I've also gotten older, I'm a lot more. It's it's funny. I can I can I can see a lot more where people are just trying to protect themselves, 
And it puts me in a really awkward spot sometimes with people where it's like, I think you're going too far, but I understand where you're coming from. Yeah. Right. It, it, and it, it's, it's a weird spot because like, do I tell them to stop or do I just carry on? And it's a boundary issue both ways, like my yeah. boundaries and their boundaries. And it's like, can I live with this? And actually that's what ultimately I ask, can I live with what they're doing? The answer is yes, I will let it pass. The answer is no, it's like, okay, man, I need to do so. I need to, I need to say something here. But mm-hmm. as I've gotten older, it's gotten harder to actually, because again, I'm maybe, maybe too empathetic there. I don't know. Like it's almost one of those. Yeah, you know, I've gotten you know, much more open-minded the older I get, you mm-hmm. know, truthfully. Um, from that like virgin girl in high school who was like, I am not going to do anything. Now I'm just like, look, if you're not hurting anybody, like if you're physically not hurting anybody and it's not illegal, like you're not doing something terrible to a child or an animal. (laughs) Okay. I'm pretty, I'm pretty fine with whatever you do as long as you're not hurt. And again, then there's that, if it's somebody you care about, really care about, and you think they're hurting themselves. Oh, see, that's I, tricky. That okay. So this is. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go to conservative to to one of my actually a Bible quote. Ironically, and not Jesus would always ask somebody when he went to heal somebody, "Do you wish to be healed?" Think about that one for a second. Why would he ask that question? Well, because you can't help somebody who doesn't want to help themselves. Exactly. All right, but it, to really have that sink in, because a lot of people are used to having carrying a certain thing. Going back to, you know, I recognize the fact that people are comfortable in their lives, even if it's hurting them. There's always a degree. We all have it. We all do things to ourselves that probably we shouldn't. But the honest truth of the matter is 